And so remember waves are things that have position versus time graphs that look like this. which were also the position versus time graphs for the harmonic oscillators that we were just studying. And so all of this math is related. And so a couple uh, conceptual things with waves, there are two types of waves that we'll talk about in this class. There are longitudinal and transverse. And so an example of a longitudinal wave is where, so if we think about sound waves, the way that sound propagates is that, let's see, The direction of the velocity of the wave is to the right, but the individual particles in the air don't move to the right. Like when I'm talking to you, I'm not like spitting air waves into your ear or something like that. What's happening is that I'm oscillating the air molecules and one, one air molecule in front of my mouth is just going up and down like this. You can think of it like uh, if you had a bird sitting on top of the water and an ocean wave comes by or a boat, they don't necessarily move with the wave. They can just kind of sit in one place and move up and down while the wave passes through them, right? And so sound waves are kind of the same way. Transverse waves are different. So with transverse waves, uh, an example of that is light. So firstly, you don't need a medium to travel through, but if you are traveling through a medium, then instead of the, uh, for example, air molecules just staying in one place and moving up and down, here, okay, getting rained on. The um, if there are particles, then they will be oscillating in the direction that the wave is traveling. So in long longitudinal, the particles oscillate perpendicular. to the direction of the velocity. And in transverse, the particles oscillate in the same direction as velocity. So we'll remember that we said that waves, we're gonna talk about waves now because they are similar to the simple harmonic motion that we've been learning about. And one of the ways that they're similar is that the graph of position versus time looks similar. 
so we saw that on the position versus time graph, this was the period T. And this was the amplitude. And so this will be true for waves or simple harmonic motion. And now another thing, another graph we could make with waves that might look the same. And the difference is what we plot on the different axis. So this could be a just a regular X versus Y coordinate system. And then your wave is propagating like this in the X direction. So this is the direction of propagation. And so if you look at this graph now, the distance from the peak to the peak is no longer a time because this is not a time axis, it's a distance axis. So now this is the wavelength, which we represent with the Greek letter lambda. And then this would still be the amplitude. Mm -hmm. And so depending on which graph you're looking at, the distance from peak to peak is either the period if the x-axis is time or its wavelength if the x-axis is a distance. So because waves move in a direction, they're going to have some velocity associated with them. So that would just be V, which is the velocity. And so now we'll have a relationship between V, the wavelength, and the period. So wavelength is a distance and period is a time and velocity is change in distance over change in time. So the velocity for a wave would just be the wavelength divided by the period. Or if you remember that period is one over frequency, then velocity is lambda times frequency or wavelength. Oh, uh, oh. And so these uh, wavelength and frequency are kind of related to each other. Uh, and basically, the if you increasing frequency means that you decrease the wavelength. Or if you decrease the frequency, then you increase the wavelength. So, and the reason for that is that the velocity, the, it, it will depend on the kind of wave, but for example, sound or light, the speed of sound and the speed of light are determined by whatever medium they're traveling through. So the speed of light in a vacuum is the three times 10 to the eight meters per second. Uh, but the speed of light in air or in water is different than that. 
And then for sound, sound can't propagate in a vacuum like light can, but sound can propagate in air or water, or it can also propagate through solid materials, which is something that light can't always do. But so because that speed is set by whatever medium you're traveling through, uh, you can take it as a constant as long as you stay in that medium. And so if the left-hand side is constant, then if I increase one of the terms on the right-hand side here, then I have to decrease the other one to compensate. So any questions about that? And then one more thing, but maybe I'll just draw on this same slide. So if we take a look at this red line and pretend that that's nice and smooth and not pointy like that. And so this would also apply to the period graph. Uh, but if we look at this red line that we've drawn on this graph, if I were to add the, the y component of these two graphs together, would they would it make the resulting wave bigger or smaller? What's that? So if I add, basically, if I add the red and the black line together, will it make the resulting wave bigger or smaller? Bigger than either of them. So it'll be bigger than both of them. So, so if this if this value was like one, and this value was two. Then when I add those together, I would get three. And then on the opposite side down here was negative two and here was negative one, then I would get the resulting answer would be down here at negative three. So like the resulting, I'll try to draw it in blue. So it looks something like that. So if I add the red wave plus the black wave, I get the blue wave. And so when your wavelengths like this match up, or we'll see in a second, if your periods match up, then you get a stronger wave than you had with either of the other two. And this is called constructive interference. And so on the graph above, let's do let's, this would be this. So now with the graph up top, if we look at the red line and the black line, if we add them together, uh, what's going to happen? So if the red line is down here at negative one, and this is up here at positive one, 
Yeah, so if your periods are shifted like this, which would be 90, a 90 degrees or pi over two shift, then is this fine? Then this is what's, I guess I'll do the same thing. So black plus red will give us blue. And yeah, so these will just cancel out. So you'll just get a blue line that is flat. And so this is called destructive interference. 